my name is Alan Tenta and this is Alan Tenta Outdoors. Welcome to my channel. Today's video, bow and drill friction fire made easy. Let's get to work. You may be asking yourself, why do I need to learn the bow and drill fire? Well, there's three reasons. Number one, it's fun. You can teach it to kids. You can pull it out when you're camping. It's just a really neat skill to have and share. Number two, I know wherever I am, if there's wood around, I could eventually get a fire going. And number three, probably the most important, the cool factor. Say you're a four on the cool scale right now. Learn how to do this, you instantly move to a 10. Well, maybe a nine, I'm serious. Everything you need for a friction fire is pictured right here. The best wood to use for bow and drill fire, in my area anyways, the British Columbia, is cedar. Others work, but this is the best. This is the bow. Notice how it has a slight bend in it. This is to allow you to tighten and loosen the amount of pressure that you have on the spindle. Let me show you. Loose, tight. Really handy when your spindle starts slipping. Now you'll also notice that there's a notch on each end of my bow. This is simply to allow me to adjust my string really easily and quickly. This is our spindle. The top needs to be thin because we want to reduce the amount of friction up here. We want to maximize the amount of friction down here. This part of the spindle will go inside our bearing block. Now smaller spindles will work. Some people prefer smaller spindles. I like to use a larger spindle myself. Remember folks, it's not the size of the spindle. It's how it's spun. This is our bearing block. This is a piece of elk vertebrae I found in the bush a few years ago. And it works really well because it's super smooth and it doesn't wear out. You can also use a piece of wood or a rock, but just remember that it has to be very smooth and comfortable in your hand because you have to apply a lot of downward pressure. If it's got some sharp edges, it'll really cause some significant pain in the old hand. This is called the hearth board. It's the same piece of wood that the spindle's made out of. I just split it off that piece of cedar I showed you previously in the video. And this is what the spindle is gonna spin against. You'll also need a really small piece of bark that's gotta be very dry. And this piece of bark is gonna fit underneath your notch and it's gonna catch your ember. So when you remove the hearth board, your ember will be sitting on this piece of bark and you can manipulate and move it into your tinder pile. This is my tinder bundle. In my area, what I've found is that juniper bark works the best. Just make sure it's very dry and fibrous and will catch that ember really easily. The next step is to do something called a burn in. Yes, we are burning in a little dish into our hearth board. So the first thing I do, I put my spindle on where I wanna create my burn in. Knife on the edge. I snug my spindle up to the edge of my knife and then I go back about a quarter of an inch. Right about, right about there. I'm just gonna mark it with my knife. Like so. Just has to be big enough to hold your spindle in place while you burn it in. So I'm gonna need to place my spindle inside my bow to get started. Come in from the top, give her the old twist a rooney and you'll see that my spindle is on the inside of my bow here. I'm gonna place my spindle in that little hole I made with the end of my knife, place my bearing block on top. Now I wanna talk a little bit about positioning yourself to be really stable. So I'm gonna place my foot right beside the spindle and my left arm is gonna wrap around my knee like this. So I'm locked in place. Lock it in! So now I'm simply going to start moving back and forth applying a bit of pressure. And that's all I need to get started. So you have a little burn-in. This is the burn-in that we just did. And you can see that I've used the saw on my Leatherman to make this groove. Now notice that that groove is wider on the bottom than it is on top. That's simply to allow a spot for the dust to collect and the ember to form. And I've also taken my knife and I've scooped away a little bit of wood to allow more oxygen inside. The last thing we need to do before we start to create our ember is we need to lubricate the end of our spindle and our bearing block using Douglas fir needles. Grind it in. 
we are ready to go for our ember. This little piece of bark is ultra important. You can see the ground here is kind of wet and I'm trying to be really careful to keep everything dry. So this little piece of bark will go right under here, right under my notch. This is gonna hopefully catch my ember, okay? I have my tinder pile ready to go right here, kind of out of the way, but reasonably close. I've lubricated my spindle and my bearing block. Let's see what we can do. I forgot to mention that once you finish your burn-in, make sure you get off all the charred wood already. It just makes it easier to get uh, powder. I'm gonna start going, applying moderate pressure. And as soon as I see smoke, that's the rate and pressure I want to hold. Remember that, as soon as you see smoke, just keep going. At, don't press any harder, don't go any faster. Peek down at your groove here and see if you're getting powder. Once this fills up partial way with powder, then you're gonna increase the speed, increase the pressure until you're pretty much tired and worn out, okay? And hopefully at the end of that process, you'll have an ember. See, I've got smoke already. I'm just gonna hold it here, nice and easy. I can see the powder falling down into my notch. It's about half full now, I'd say. That is good news, because you can see that my pile of dust is smoking. It means inside here, I have a small ember. Treat this ember like Gollum treats his ring. My precious. Let it grow. You're not in a huge hurry. Okay, see, so you can already see already it's growing. So I'm gonna fan it a little bit. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good sized ember. Now I'm gonna place it inside my tinder pile. I'm gonna make a little nest. I'm just gonna plop it in very carefully. Like so. Keep your pressure safe. I'm gonna kind of snuggle it in there. Let the precious do the work. Let it grow. I'm not in a hurry here. This bark makes it very handy to manipulate your tinder pile to move it around. I'm just gonna keep snuggling it in there. We have flame. Bone drill friction fire made easy. Let me know in the comments if you tried and if you were successful. My name is Alan Tenta. This is Alan Tenta Outdoors, and uh, we'll see you next time.